In this video, I'm going to go over a turbo upgrade that could cost you as much as $12,000. This version is by a company called Force Performance. Now, I don't know what they do this for, but I have seen a build just like this that has been advertised for as much as $12,000. So in this video, I'm going to give you the details of why it would cost that much. Here's a close look at these turbos and what's involved in this. This is a Nissan GTR turbo upgrade where it's converted over to dual ball bearing a GT2871R. The compressor outlings are completely recasted and remade. It's a 3 inch anti surge and the compressor wheel measurement should be around 53.1 by 71 millimeter. You can see that the outlets have to be clocked, re-welded, or has to be cut off and re-welded and clocked. Then you can see how the wastegate is mounted. On this side, it's mounted around the inlet of the compressor housing, and it, the fastener is right here where it clamps there. They are forged wastegate actuators, so they're going to have a stiffer spring in them so you can run more boost. The exhaust housings are milled down, then they have to be re-welded on, then re-milled down and tapped for bolts. And that's where it accepts the GT28R cartridge. The compressor housing, like I said, it had to be custom made so it had been cast. So they would have had to pay a development fee just to have the compressor housings designed, then on top of that have them have it paid to actually get the housings and the machine work done. The other cover or other turbo, you can see the same concept here, except this one is a little bit different. So on this one, they welded a piece on here and then put two bolts to hold on the wastegate actuator. The outlet had to have been chopped off at a certain angle. Then Reweld this angle. I reweld this in, or this outlet pipe on, so that I'll meet up to the intercooler pipe on the other side of the car. Then the same process for the turbine housing. Just mainly milled off the V band flange, welded more material on the housing, and then drilled and tapped with the CNC end mill. The end mill necessary to do this kind of work is most likely, well, if you're talking about getting one new, you're probably going to spend about thirty to $40,000, depending on the options you get for that. And for the compressor, uh, the machine to machine the compressor housings, it really depends on what they did for that. They could have had somebody else do the machine work and just offer it as a product to them. If not, they would have had to spend between thirty to forty thousand dollars just to have a compress a the machine work done for the compressor outlings. And then all the lines have to be redone. And if you're curious what that that is, you can get your uh, boost reading off that. So they just block that off. You can that's where you can hook up your boost gauge. The oil feed and oil return lines and the coolant lines all have to be redone in comparison to the stock turbo. The thing to note about this turbo is that they use a 4 an on a 10 an drain, but I'm gonna end up machining that out a little bit bigger just because I felt like it was too small. And these were blowing oil, that's why we did the rebuild on them. And the other one, the oil drain was like really tiny, so we ended up porting that out. I think that's originally why they're, why they're here. So that's a problem that we're trying to fix, or by, by, yeah, that's a problem that I'm trying to fix by making sure that the oil drains are free flowing enough so he won't have that issue when he goes to reinstall these. On the turbine side, the measurement is 47 by 53.8 and that's a nine blade turbine that's the same turbine wheel and a gt2860 it's the same turbine wheel and the gt2871 but the gt2871 turbine shaft is taller 
to make it work with the GT3071R compressor wheel, which classifies it as a GT2871R. Here's a look at the oil drain so you can get an idea of what the size looks like before we ported it out. It's just tiny in diameter on the alpha drain, so I think that's an issue. This very well could have the same problem after he goes install this. So if you look at it, it comes out at 90. You might be able to get away with that, but being that it's so small, he may not be able to get away with it as easily as if it had a bigger size diameter drain. I don't know if this was part of the kit that they had when they sold them these turbos or what, but if you do have this set up on your car, you just want to pay attention that if you're leaking oil out the turbos, this is always the first thing to check. That concludes this video. If you thought it was helpful and liked it, you could always comment below. And if you have a set of these, if we could fit you in, we'll try and get those rebuilt for you. This is the first set that we've rebuilt before. And I don't know if I'll see one of these again or not. It doesn't really matter to me. I know we saved this guy a ton of money, though, from having somebody else rebuild it. And that's what our business is all about.